Welcome back to Amjad Sifra. Today we'll be making a very simple and fresh pasta recipe inspired by my recent sefer. Cherry tomato sauce that's garlicky, a little bit zesty. It's beautiful with any summer pairing. So let's get started with this very simple and easy to make recipe. The star of this dish are really these tomatoes. I love to use a mix of tricolor tomatoes as well as these burst tomatoes that come on the vine. They're really cute. They're not the exact same as cherry tomatoes, but if cherry tomatoes is the only thing you have access to, go ahead and use that. But I really recommend using a nice mix. I'll include all the measurements down below, but it's a really forgiving dish where if you added a little bit more tomatoes than I did, it's really no big deal. Make sure you wash these and allow them to dry because you want them to be nicely dried out before you start cooking them. The second key ingredient is garlic. And I really think what makes this dish unique is the way they are sliced. So notice I'm cutting them very, very thinly. Now the purpose of this is that so they really melt in with the tomatoes. You don't wanna dice it or crush it, you won't get that same effect. So take your time and invest in cutting these garlic the way I'm showing you here. So we're gonna get this started with a generous amount of olive oil. I know it looks like a ridiculous amount, but I'm making this for about seven people, so it's fine. Next, we're gonna add our washed and dried tomatoes. I'm just gonna add them straight in. Notice I haven't chopped them. Do not chop your tomatoes or this recipe won't work the same way. We want to slowly cook them down in that olive oil with all of that beautiful garlic so that they burst on their own. The only other things we're adding at this stage is a generous amount of salt and I like to use kosher salt as well as some freshly ground black pepper and red pepper flakes. I hope that you use the regular Italian red pepper flakes. If you use Japanese pepper flakes, it just won't be the same. So please stick to the classic kind. Now just give that a gentle toss and keep the heat on medium low and be patient. Now this is all going to wilt down over time and you just want to make sure that you're rubbing the bottom of that pot, allowing everything to come together. It'll take about 20 to 25 minutes if you're using a huge batch like I am. If you're only making a serving for two or four people, it'll take about 15 minutes. So just keep an eye on it. While those tomatoes are doing their thing, go ahead and start freshly grating your parmigiano reggiano. Did I say that right? <laughs> I really like that strong nuttiness and what we're after is this rind. Now this is where you can get a lot of flavor. I'm gonna add this directly into the stewed tomatoes and just allow it to cook down. It won't melt in entirely, it'll get soft and at the end you wanna make sure that you remove it. We're also gonna be adding some fresh lemon zest. The lemon zest really wakes up all the flavors. I highly recommend you do not skip this step. We're gonna give everything a gentle mix and you'll know that this is ready once all of the tomatoes have pretty much burst. You may have some lingering ones that look like they just need that extra push, so it's okay, use the back of your spatula and crush it a little bit. Meanwhile, we're going to prep our very well salted water for our pasta. Now, when it comes to the pasta, I really suggest you get some fresh pasta. I went to Italy, learned how to make fresh pasta, basically got spoiled and now I can't go back. Now, obviously we don't have time to make fresh pasta all the time, but luckily your local grocery store has fresh pasta in the refrigerator section. So go look for that and get it. The great thing is it only takes about three to four minutes tops to be ready. So it's worth it in my opinion. Now, as you can see, the sauce is beautiful and thick and I'm ready to add the pasta. Now, I'm just dumping it straight from the pasta water into the pot, just like that. And I like that it's still full of that starchy water because that starchy water that gets in there will help thicken it up even more and the flavor will just be amazing. So don't worry about too much water getting in, just do your best. And we're gonna add one more ingredient before we mix it all up. And that's our Parmesan. Now you'll never hear me say that's enough cheese, but just make sure you leave some on the side for extra sprinkling when you're enjoying this. And then you wanna 
gonna toss this all together really gently. Fresh pasta is pretty fragile and you don't want to rip it up. So use that spatula and you know, kind of take your time. Make sure you take that Parmesan rind out of your pasta so nobody bites straight into it. Our final step is to pick some beautiful fresh basil to top off this pasta. Now, don't comment down below and ask me if you can use dry basil. I'm sorry, it's just not gonna do it. Go find some fresh basil and trust me, you will not regret it. So instead of just throwing whole basil leaves on top of your pasta, I recommend stacking them up and then thinly slicing them into ribbons. This is a really nice way to garnish and it will also kind of weave into the pasta really, really nicely. So go ahead and dump that luscious goodness into a serving platter and then generously garnish with the basil. And that's all there is to it. I'm telling you, this creamy, beautiful pasta is irresistible. So let's go ahead and see what the tasters think. Action. All right, so today I'm gonna taste us some Jad's summer pasta. This is my first time trying it. Um, fresh pasta, correct? So it smells really good. It smells really good. If I don't forget how to eat this, this is a big bite. It's good. There's a lot of flavor. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please don't forget to subscribe and all the details will be down below.